So going into Sofia Coppola's Priscilla, I'm not gonna lie, I was quite nervous. Over the past couple of years, I've become a massive fan of Elvis Presley. I loved the Baz Luhrmann film, I fell in love with Austin Butler's performance, I was rooting for him to win the Oscar. I was basically listening to Elvis Presley every day on repeat. You know, I cut my hair to look like Elvis, I did the voice impression and all that kind of stuff. I've basically developed a way of how to do the Elvis voice pretty seamlessly. You know, it's, it's not that hard, you just gotta open up the larynx and talk a little bit and do all this kind of stuff and go, Mama. That, that's how you do the Elvis voice. And whenever I get excited or interested in a project, I do the thing where I try and learn everything about the thing I possibly can. And so I was watching Elvis documentaries, I was watching Elvis's films, I was watching all of his old music videos and such. Like, I became a massive fan of Elvis Presley. But one thing I want to preface is that I love Elvis Presley, the entertainer, the icon, what he represents. I love that side to Elvis Presley. When you get into Elvis Presley, the man, I didn't know him. None of us really knew him. Like, when I was doing my deep dive research on Elvis, I knew of his grooming of Priscilla, but I didn't know to what extent. Because, I mean, let's face it, the Baz Luhrmann musical biopic essentially romanticizes their relationship. It makes it seem like they were the perfect couple and that they were destined to be together, and even when they separate, Elvis always loved her and he always will, and that they would get back together and such. And then I found out that Sofia Coppola was making her own biopic on Priscilla, and then I saw set pictures of Jacob Elordi as Elvis and Kaylee Spaney as Priscilla, and I'm not gonna lie, seeing the set pictures, it did just feel like cheap cosplay of the Baz Luhrmann film. Elordi didn't look that much like Elvis compared to Butler, and even still with Butler, when you look at Butler in the Elvis film, he doesn't really look like Elvis Presley until you get to the 68 comeback special. You know, the way they styled Austin's hair was different to the way Elvis styled his hair in the 50s and 60s and such, and so it takes a while in that film for Austin Butler to become the image of Elvis Presley. He captures the spirit, and that's what really sells his performance, but when you get to him actually trying to look like Elvis, doesn't really happen until you get to the 68 comeback special. But anyways, the build-up to Priscilla in many ways was quite a interesting period for me, I will say. You had reviews who had seen the film earlier at film festivals praising it, or you had Elvis fans who had seen it earlier at those film festivals absolutely scolding it, giving it scathing reviews. You had people on Twitter comparing Austin Butler and Jacob Elordi, and I'm not gonna lie, those comparisons got very tiresome very quickly. For some weird reason, the internet and social media has a weird habit of hating on people that put effort into their performances. I don't get it. Everyone's like, oh, Austin Butler's such a tryhard because he method acted and couldn't get rid of the voice for a year, and it's like, yeah. I'm really glad that he actually did his job and tried to, you know, put as much effort and work and time as he could into his performance. I don't know why we should be mocking that, we should be praising that. He put in the hard work and it paid off. And then when the trailers came out too, the way the trailers edited and sold the film, it was really weird. They just kept purposefully making Elvis seem really ominous and evil and it was like, ah, oh, this isn't the Elvis Presley that you know and love. I don't know if I like it. What do you mean you don't know if you're lying here? In many ways, it was total whiplash. You had the Baz Luhrmann film that was celebrating the iconography and the legacy of Elvis. And then the trailers for Priscilla came out and it was like, oh, we're going to destroy Elvis's legacy and tarnish his reputation. And it's kind of like, oh, I, I didn't know how I felt at the time. I was kind of like, why are we doing this? This doesn't make any sense. But so after having seen the film, I can safely say that Sofia Coppola's Priscilla is a good movie. And one of the things I will say about the discourse of this film, and it's kind of sad, is the fact that the attention of this film is not on Priscilla, it's on Elvis, and that's kind of a shame because when you actually watch the film, this film isn't really about Elvis. Elvis is a secondary character. In many ways, he's the antagonist of the film, but he's also not an evil person. It's a film about Priscilla losing her independence, falling in love with Elvis, getting married to Elvis, and then trying to break away from Elvis. But the sad thing about it is that the film is being surrounded by controversy because it's bringing forth Elvis Presley's controversy into the forefront. It's really showcasing his problems as a person. The cast overall was really solid. Hayley Spaney as Priscilla was really good. Like, she was able to capture the anxiety and the fear and the overall anxiousness of Priscilla in that situation, in any of the situations surrounding Elvis. Whether it was her and Elvis having a romantic moment, whether it was her fighting about Elvis's infidelity and such, she delivered every one of those scenes really well. And Jacob Elordi was also very solid as Elvis Presley. It's very different to Austin Butler because in many ways, Jacob Elordi doesn't really get to play the showman Elvis. He's just playing Elvis the man. And his portrayal of the regular man Elvis was really good. When you watch interviews of Elvis Presley doing this thing, like, oh, hey, yeah, you know, I was a child, I was ladies and gentlemen, and blah blah blah, you know, I, I don't know, everything's happened so fast. You know the very courteous and polite and bumbling Elvis Presley persona, Elordi does that very well. But when it comes to the showman side of Elvis, Elordi doesn't really get too much to do, but when they do show certain sequences, he's fine, but he doesn't have the source that Austin does. <laughs> Oh, 
But when the film does have Elvis do some showman-like stuff, there's not too much because obviously the Presley estate did not endorse this film. And so there is no Elvis music in this film. There are songs that Elvis sang, but they belong to other people. But overall, this film does not have any Elvis music. And because of that, I would actually quite like to see a cut of this film with Elvis music, but also that's not the story Coppola is trying to tell. Honestly, one of the things I was expecting from this film, and I didn't really get, and it surprised me, was the fact that I was expecting Coppola to really showcase Elvis's faults, his infidelity, his pedophilic tendencies, but she doesn't really showcase that. At least not to the extreme, because realistically, the only pedophilic actions we see in this film is between Elvis and Priscilla, because as far as Priscilla Presley has said in her own autobiography, her and Elvis never actually consummated their relationship until they were married. I mean, if you've done some basic research into Elvis's love life, you'll realize that the film doesn't really go against the grain at all. Coppola in many ways kind of held back. And what I mean by that is that I wasn't shocked by anything at all. In fact, there's a documentary series on Amazon called Elvis's Girls. And you watch that documentary and it fully dives into Elvis Presley as a person, his pedophilic tendencies, and the fact that Priscilla was not just a one-time thing. Elvis did this with multiple other girls. In many ways, that documentary series disturbed me more than Coppola's film. The thing is, is that I don't believe Elvis Presley was an evil man. You listen to people talk about him, they loved him, the people that worked with him loved and adored him, they said he was so generous, so kind, so giving, and the people that were close to him that knew of Elvis's preference for underage girls and such, they talk about the fact that he had a traumatic childhood and there's some kind of deep hidden trauma that wounded him at 14 years old, which made him attracted to 14 year olds, but also they talk about how Elvis never really felt like he grew up and in many ways his mindset kind of stayed. In many ways he felt like he was eternally youthful, which in many ways is very similar to Michael Jackson. When doing research, you see the amount of people that knew of Elvis's pedophilic tendencies, I was honestly shocked to see that people didn't stop him. The people that work with him and say that they loved him didn't hold him accountable, didn't tell him to stop, didn't try to change him or help him. In many ways, it was the Colonel's fault as well. The Colonel helped to hide Priscilla and then move her into Graceland and then forced Elvis to marry her and such. And I'm not accepting or endorsing Elvis's pedophilia. No, pedophilia is disgusting. It's wrong. It's the dark stain on Elvis's legacy that I do not like. Which is why I always say I like Elvis Presley, the entertainer. I don't know the man. People always said he was a godly man. He believed in his Christian faith because his mama instilled it in him. He wanted to be a good Christian. He wanted to be a good person. He was always kind and giving and generous. The people that worked with him loved him. And the way Coppola portrays Elvis's behavior in many ways falls in line with the accounts people say of him, of how he was a godly man, how he was kind, he was very giving, he was very generous. In many ways, the situation is very complicated and very nuanced. And it's a side of Elvis that I don't really want to delve into as such because that's not why I like Elvis Presley. I like Elvis Presley, the entertainer, the performer, the man that makes everyone smile and is very funny and charismatic on stage. But this is also a side of Elvis that I hate. I don't like it at all. It's like how people try to throw out the allegation that Elvis Presley was racist, despite the fact that he grew up in a black neighborhood. He grew up in a black ghetto. He went to Christian churches. He was friends with black people. He was friends with artists like Little Richard. The black community loved him. Elvis always hired black gospel singers to be in his backup choir. Elvis Presley. I love him. That's my buddy, my baby. I love him. He was, we are very good friends. And it was a very great loss to the music world. Elvis is one of the greatest performers ever lived in, in this world. And electrifying, elevated, oh, he's just, you can't say enough. He's just beautiful. Right. I love Elvis. You hear the people that work with him just absolutely praise and adore him and say that he was so kind and giving and generous. Hey boss, hey boss, I was gonna ask him something. But he said, no, 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 I'm not your boss. I'm your brother. And that's how it was from then on out. But also Elvis Presley as a white artist was able to bring black rhythms, black music into the cultural mainstream. He used his platform to elevate black musicians. So that allegation just doesn't make any sense to me. The pedophilia, yeah. You can full on attack Elvis for that. I'm not defending that. Now the thing when it comes to Priscilla is the idea of comparing Priscilla to Baz Luhrmann's Elvis biopic. At the end of the day, they're two different films trying to do different things. Baz Luhrmann was trying to showcase the iconography of Elvis Presley, why fans of Elvis loved and adored him, why he became a pop culture icon. And it's not to say that Baz Luhrmann didn't showcase Elvis's bad tendencies, his faults. He does briefly mention the fact that Elvis dated a teenage Priscilla, though he doesn't say explicitly the age, but also he showcases Elvis the man, the loner, his temper, his infidelity. And Sofia Coppola is telling Priscilla's story, her relationship with Elvis, her being groomed by Elvis, their relationship together, the good, the bad, her eventually leaving him. One of the things to definitely take away from Sofia Coppola's Priscilla is the fact that we as humans should not be idolizing celebrities. We should not be treating them like gods or deities or putting them on these pedestals 
At the end of the day, they're all human, they're all flawed. They have their bright moments, they have their dark moments, they have their grey moments. I like Elvis Presley, the entertainer, the icon. In many ways, Baz Luhrmann captured all the aspects of Elvis I loved in his biopic. The man was incredibly charming and kind and gentle and generous with many people. He was a fantastic entertainer and he was a powerhouse of a performer. But regardless of how many great stories there are about him, you can't deny the fact that he was just a human being. I didn't know the man. He's a pedophile for sure, and there's a side of Elvis Presley that I do not like. It's a dark stain on his legacy that I despise. But I do think that when it comes to that subject, it requires a little bit of nuance. It's very similar to the Michael Jackson controversy. And in many ways, it adds more substance to the debate of whether you can separate the art from the artist. And I think when it comes to Elvis Presley, I can. Because Elvis on stage was a superstar, and Elvis behind closed doors was a different person. I didn't know the man. But those are just my thoughts on Sofia Coppola's Priscilla. What did you guys think of the film? Are you an Elvis fan that absolutely loved it or hated it? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, follow on social media, all the good stuff. Until we meet again, see you guys next time.